Good morning, everybody. Um, happy Father's Day to all of us fathers. Happy Father's Day to all of us mothers that have to fulfill the role of the father. Um, happy Father's Day, Abba. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, that, that you have given us uh, the spirit of adoption where we can cry out, Abba, Father. Lord, we thank you for grafting us into your family. Lord, we thank you for all that you do for us. And Lord, we just, we just want to honor you today as the ultimate Father. Lord, we're so grateful for you. We're so grateful for you, Father. We love you. We love you. We love you. We love you. Amen. Man, I think I got to talk last year on Father's Day. It's like the, the, the thing, the theme. Um, <clears throat> so, wow. What a, what, a, what a couple of weeks. What a couple of weeks. Thank you, thank you, Lord. Um, man, I, I, had to, I had to stand over here and just ask the Lord to forgive me um, just for not trusting him. You know, uh, he, he began giving me this a couple of weeks ago, actually. And, uh, and I've been, I got about 10 different versions of it. Um, nine of them are in the trash can. And... Uh, and I hope that this, Lord, I just really, please, please, Lord, help me. <laughs> please help me. Um, please let your words be heard. Um, in Jesus' name. And so, uh, <clears throat> yeah, I've made a, I've took counsel from friends, uh, from old friends, from young friends, um, just from brothers and sisters, <clears throat> and I've, I've made about a hundred different fleeces and tried everything I possibly could to get out of this, even made up a backup, uh, <clears throat> even made a backup message. And then the, you know, after a bunch of just, I don't know, squirming, really, <laughs> uh, some people give some really good advice, and this is probably the best. Don't worry about what man thinks, continue to listen to God. And I'm like, man, that's so simple. And then the Lord goes, well, I want you to share some things. And I'm like, I don't know about that. <laughs> How about if we let Nathan share that? <laughs> and uh, no, no it, it's, it's good. Um, it's good. The, the Lord kind of, <clears throat> he gave me two primary scripture or two primary sets of scriptures. These two primary sets of scriptures that we're going to hang out on for the most part, is Matthew chapter 7, verses 21 through 23, and then Exodus 33, verse 13. And uh, just as we're going through things, so, so I'm going to just try to convey to you guys uh, a piece of my walk with the Lord, a piece of my conversating with Him, a piece of uh, me sharing my heart with Him, and Him sharing His heart with me. Um, so some of this is really, uh, I guess, testimony type thing. And then there were, you know, some real, uh, some real important points that the Lord, he's just awesome. He's awesome. I'm telling you guys, um, the roller coaster ride of walking with the Lord, it is the coolest, scariest thing that, that I've ever known. So uh, <clears throat> I'm going I'm to paraphrase the story kind of real quick, and then we'll kind of get into it is uh, this first paraphrasing in Matthew chapter 7, verses 21 through 23. This is where, um, you know, I believe this is at the Bema seat, and people are coming before Jesus, and, and, and they say, uh, you know, Lord, Lord, we've, uh, we've cast out devils in your name. We've healed the sick in your name. Um, you know, we've done these things in your name. And he says, uh, depart from me. I never knew you, you workers of iniquity. Now that's it in a nutshell. Um, and when when when, he, when I first got this, the word "new" was big, bold, black letters, like "Depart from me, I never knew you." And uh, and so I I knew that this was from the Lord, and and I just kind of sat on it for a little while, and uh, <clears throat> and I was at a I was at an all night prayer meeting, and at three thirty three in the morning. I heard another, bloop, another scripture, 
and it was uh, Exodus. It was Exodus thirty three thirteen, and and this is a conversation that Moses is having with God, and he basically says, "God, if I have found favor in your sight, then show me your ways that I may know you." And he again, I had that word "no" highlighted. So I had over here in the in the uh, Jesus saying, "Depart from me, I never knew you." You know, highlighted, and then over here it said, um, "Show me your ways that I may know you." And so I kind of been sitting on that, and and those was really all that I had for the longest time. And I kind of was asking the Lord, you know, what's going on here? Um, you know, what, what what am I supposed to do with this? And uh, and then things kind of started to unfold, as they always do. Um, and <laughs> it was just so wild. I, I remember, uh, so I got a bookshelf at my house. We got a bookshelf at our house, and it's in the corner. It's like a corner bookshelf. And it stands straight up, and it has all these little branches off of it. And I have a handful of books, like heavy, big books. And um, this little thing is, like, bent now. Like, just from all the books being on it, it, like, is wilting. It looks like it's about to break. <clears throat> and so we've taken all of our books, I've taken, we, I've taken all of my books off, and I've set them on the kitchen table, and this is one of them, this is one of them, I have a whole, that, that twingy twing is driving me amazing, I love it, <laughs> um, so this, this is just another, you know, you guys have seen me and heard me teach out of a whole ton of different Bibles by now, this Bible right here, I haven't used it in quite a while. It's just, it's a King James Version, but it's a Hebrew-Greek interlineal study Bible. And so what that means is the main Bible was set up in the King James Version, but as you read down through it, um, it has, it has like um, numbers by a lot of the words. You know what I'm saying? In the, in the Old Testament, it would be Hebrew, and in the New Testament, it would be Greek, and you could find these, uh, the original text of the meaning through the concordances or through lexicons and stuff of that nature. And then also in the back of this book is that same thing. There's a concordance, there's a lexicon in the back of this. So it, it'll have you the, you know, you read the passage and then you get this little number and it's like, well, what does that really mean? Well, I was walking out of, uh, I was getting ready to walk out of my house the other morning and this was laying on the table. I haven't touched this book in a while. And I was walking by and the Lord said, open that book. And so I stopped, and I set my coffee down with an attitude because I had stuff I got to do. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> and I mean, I mean, you know, it is what it is. Set my coffee down, and I'm like, okay, now what? And the Lord's like, open it up to Matthew 7. And so I open it up to Matthew 7. <clears throat> and, uh, and, and he says, now read, read verse 23. And I read verse 23. It says, and then I will profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me. Ye that work iniquity. And I read it, and iniquity, he poof, highlighted it up for me. You know what I mean? And I'm like, okay, iniquity, what's that all about? And it's got, of course, it has one of these numbers right next to it, number 458. And, uh, and so because this is the New Testament, this would be a Greek translation, and so it would be G458. And so you roll to the back of the lexicon, G458, and, and it tells you what it means. And, uh, and I, was, I was perplexed and disturbed at the same time um, when I read it. And uh, so we're just going to pause there for just a minute, okay? And, um, ah. Uh, <laughs> you ever do something and the Lord just interrupts you? It seems like the theme, the theme. Well, <clears throat> um, yo, Chris. <laughs> Everybody, this is Chris. He's a first-time visitor. I hope you give him a hug and tell him hi uh, today before he goes home. So uh, we were out in the hallway, you know what I'm saying, and, and I did this. I, I just met Chris. Uh, actually, I met him briefly about a year or so ago one time on a job site and then just recently run into him again and, and, and invited him to church, and it was like pulling teeth. But uh, with a little... Uh, help from, from my friend Billy and from my friend Brandon. Uh, we twisted his arm enough to come to church. Uh, so anywho, uh, when we was out in the, out in the lobby and we were, I was doing this when I was walking by you, I seen a quick little movie play out, okay? And I seen, I seen a 502 engine built with a blower on it, like vroom, vroom. And then, and then I seen 
I seen a spark plug laying on a table. <laughs> and so there's this massive engine. You know what I mean? You know, I mean, do you know? <laughs> do you know the kind of power that a 502 makes? Do you know the kind of power with, that a 502 makes with a blower? Bill, do you know? Well, we're talking some serious juice. But what happens if the spark plug's pulled out of it? You get nothing. You get nothing. And I feel like you're that spark plug. I feel like you have access to greatness. You have access to big time power. We're not talking 350 just gets you around, 351. We're talking 502. We're talking the real deal. And I seen an arm pick this spark plug up and put it in the motor, and the motor came to life. Wah! And I just feel like the Lord has great plans for you, man. You have access to some serious power. You just got to plug it in. You have amazing testimonies. You have amazing things, almost unbelievable things that have happened to you. And they haven't happened to you just for you to go through them. They've happened to you for you to help other people. Those are your testimonies. And we know in Revelation it says you're set free by the blood of the Lamb and the word of your testimony. You have amazing stories. Just allow the Lord to take you, the spark plug, and plug you in to the big engine that is him. Um, Lord, I just thank you for Chris and for what you're doing in his life. Lord, I thank you that he's here today. I thank you that we have stumbled across paths. I thank you for the greatness that you've placed within him. Lord, I ask that you would continue to count and counter him. Lord, I ask that you would continue to put men and women in his day-to-day -day activities that would continue to point him to you. Lord, I thank you that you are already drawing him. We recognize that you were in work in his life or he wouldn't even be here. And so, Lord, we're just asking for more, more of your presence in his life, more encounters, more understanding. Lord, I ask that you would magnify your voice as he listens to you. I ask that you would answer his questions as he asks you questions, Heavenly Father. Lord, I just speak blessings blessings to and through you. You are loved, you are accepted, and you are wanted. In Jesus' name, amen. Um, <laughs> oh my goodness. And while we're going here, <laughs> uh, Dakota, have I ever met you? I've never met you, just met you today. When we shook hands, you remember shaking hands just a minute ago? Hey, nice to meet you. We shook hands and I seen two deers Two white-tailed deers locking horns. It was an older deer and it was a younger deer. It was a big, huge, mature deer and it was a smaller deer. The smaller deer overpowered the big deer. And I'm standing over here worshiping by you asking the Lord what that is. And he said, Dakota's the younger deer. And I'm like, what does that even mean? What does that mean that he's the younger deer? And I, and I feel like you're just, you're coming out of the shadow. You're coming out of the shadow of something, someone. You're becoming your own person. You're becoming independent, you're standing on your own, and you're actually coming under the shadow of the Most High. And so, I don't know. Huh? Love it. You love it? <laughs> Lord, I just thank you for these little pictures, these little movies that you, allow, uh, to, that you allow me to see. And Lord, I just release blessings to and through Dakota, Heavenly Father, and I just, I just ask that you would even... Even grow him exponentially, grow him quickly, Lord. Allow him to become even greater than the footsteps that he walks in, even greater than, than his father, than his mentors, than whoever is in his life, Father, that has been raising him up and training him in the ways of you. Lord, I just thank you, I thank you, I thank you for the man that he is becoming. I thank you for the seeds that you have planted within him, Heavenly Father. And I just, I just ask for some miracle grow, that you would explode these antlers, <laughs> explode these antlers and let him be a mighty man of God. In Jesus' name, amen. <clears throat> oh, man, oh, man, oh, man. Um. So, uh, thank you, Father. Um. This, this cool little book that the Lord's reintroduced me to, this, uh, this Greek-Hebrew uh, study Bible, it's, it's pretty cool. I'm kind of sad that I haven't opened it up in a while. And uh, in, in wrestling with the Father over these couple of passages, and I really wasn't getting the understanding, I just knew that He gave them to me. And sometimes He gives you things, and you just got to sit on them. You just got to sit on them. And, and some people call it meditate, some people call it reflect, some people call it... 
uh, I don't even know what you would call it, listening, um, just, just, okay, Lord, I know that that was you, but what do you want me to do with that? And, uh, and I think, you know, I think I might know what he wants to do, and, and then he goes, that isn't what I want to do. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, that's really, thank you for the confidence builder. Um, <laughs> and he begins to show me through this process of relationship. It's through the relationship with the Father. He doesn't, look, he is sovereign, and he can do anything he wants at any given time. He can give us all the answers to all of the world, but that isn't how relationship is developed. You know what I'm saying? When, 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 when I suckered Susie into marrying me, she had no idea what she was getting into. You know what I mean? I put on this facade of how awesome I was, and then over time, she began to see the real me. Ugh. Sorry. Sorry, Susie. And uh, the Lord somehow, some way, you know what I mean, put it all together. But it was over the course of time that the real me began to show. And I began to get to, get to see the real her. You know what I'm saying? And... and yeah, mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm just going to stop with that. But, but uh, it's just over the course of time that relationship is developed with the Father. You know, he gives us a little bit, and, and he wants us to take a little bit. He, he'll, he'll make a statement, or he'll show something to you, and then what he's looking for you is to ask him, what do you want me to do with that? What is that all about, Father? Can you give me greater clarification? I'm seeing these little movies play out when I look at people or when I shake people's hands, and I'm like, what, is he, what am I supposed to do with this? What, and, and as, you know, you're going through worship and you're still pondering it, he begins to give you things. And that is what relationship looks like. He gives you a little, you ask for something. You know what I mean? If, if he shows you something, if you see something, if you, if you experience something and, and you ask him about it and he doesn't answer you, ask a different question. Sometimes relationship with the Father is all about asking the right question. You know what I mean? If I ask him the wrong question, he won't talk to me sometimes. And what he's doing, he's not giving me the cold shoulder. He's just, come on with a different approach. Listen, what worked yesterday isn't going to work today. And I even feel that. I even feel that right now. I feel like that I don't, there's somebody in this place, there's somebody in this place right now that has a negative experience tied. They have a negative emotion tied to an experience of the past that's holding them back. They refuse to move forward because of what has happened in the past. And now every time they come into this situation, they believe it's always going to be like that. So why even try? Now, I don't know who that is, but I know that the Lord wants to heal somebody from that. So Lord, whoever that is, Lord, I just ask that you would heal the emotion that's tied to the negative experience of the circumstances happened in their life. Father, I ask that you would help them to know that there is different results for different scenarios. Father, I ask that you would heal their hearts and give them the courage and the boldness to step out into the newness, the new wine of whatever it is that you're wanting to bring them into. Lord, I ask that in Jesus' name. <laughs> uh, yeah, we might get through this. Uh, anywho, the Lord starts sharing these two passages, or these couple of passages with me, and, and I start going back to things that I previously learned or previously experienced, and I find myself, because we're humans of pattern, we want the path of least resistance. We will constantly go to the thing that, is, oh, that we've always been taught or always learned, and so I started to have these thoughts and these developments of where I thought the Lord wanted to go, and he goes, that's not exactly where I wanted to go. And I'm like, well, dang, I felt rejected. I felt rejected because I, the Lord didn't want to do what I wanted to do. That's a misconception. You know, emotions are indicators. They're not truths. Think about this. Your emotions are not the truth. I feel afraid. Not true. I feel scared. Not true. I feel angry. That's not truth. Those are indicators of your state of being. They're not truths. We cannot... I tell so many times I say, I feel like the Lord is, and the Lord's like, don't be doing that, because your feelings shift. Your feelings change all the time. So I argued with the Lord over this for a couple of week and a half now. He always wins. I don't even know why. You would think I would learn. So he had me, but we're, we're still on pause. Are you guys still remembering where we're at in the Matthew and the Exodus? And depart from me, I never knew you. And, and, and show me your ways that I may know you. You track me? Okay, keep that on pause because I feel like the Lord wanted to do something there. And, and me arguing with him, 
I thought I was getting this for, for the whole church, but of course, for some reason, the messages that he gives me, I get to experience before I ever get to deliver them. And that's awesome, and not, <laughs> at the same time. Um, so Isaiah chapter 1, Isaiah chapter 1, verses 18 and 20, <clears throat> is, uh, <laughs> this is crazy. Lord, you're so good. I mean, I, you're so good. I don't mean that in any way. It just uh, so I'm going to read this to you guys out of the out of the uh, the King James version. So bear with me if I thous and these and umps and <laughs> um, Isaiah chapter one verses eighteen through twenty. It says, "Come now and let us reason together," saith the Lord. So I'm arguing with the Lord, and He's like, "Come here, Junior. Let us reason." And I'm like, "What is that? Come on, God, for real, Dad." I mean, we, like, listen, we need to thank our fathers, because if it wasn't for our fathers, we wouldn't be here today. You know what I'm saying? It is Father's Day, right? And so when dad says, come here, boy, I want to talk to you, <laughs> that can go two ways. That can go two ways. Oh, man. Come now and let us reason together, says the Lord. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they be red like crimson, they shall be as wool. <clears throat> the Lord already stopped me and he's telling me, listen, I'm just already telling you to do something. You were fighting with me. That is sinful. And I'm like, I thought we were just having a discussion. <laughs> I'm, I'm learning that he gives a lot of grace, but when it comes right down to it, he means what he says and he says what he means. <laughs> <clears throat> So I found myself having to ask him to forgive me over here because I didn't trust him, I didn't obey him. I've been a nervous Nelly all week, all morning. It's been, it's been horrible. Um, he says, 19, If you be willing and obedient, you shall eat the good of the land. But if you refuse and rebel, you shall be delivered with the sword, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. And so like, he, he stopped me like, Come here, let's reason now together. And he, he, he suckered me in with his love, like, sure, let's reason together. And then he was like, boy, <laughs> makes me think of uh, that Looney Tunes cartoon with that big chicken. And he's like, boy. <laughs> um, he says, if I'm willing and obedient, if I will do what he asked me to do, then I'm going to eat the good. I'm going to eat the good of the land. It takes a couple things there. Willingness, I have to go, okay. And obedience, which they're kind of the same, but they're kind of not, because I've been obedient before, but not willing, and he rebuked me for that too, <laughs> in a good way. He said, you know, it's a, it, you can be 100% right and totally wrong. And I'm like, how's that even work? So I was obedient to him, but my heart was wrong. I was obedient to his word, but I wasn't willing. And so the, there, is a, there is a, you know, there's a dividing line there. Um. Huh. So that word obedient, of course, and when I'm going through all this in verse 18, or I'm sorry, I'm sorry, in verse 19, in verse 19 it says, if you are willing and obedient, he highlights it because there's a cool number to it. It's number 80, 85. If you guys pay attention to concordances or Hebrew or Greek or any of that stuff. <clears throat> That word in Hebrew means Shema. Shema. Um, some of us know and have heard it referred to before as Deuteronomy 6 4, as, as another spot that that comes. So I didn't go there, I just looked it up. You know, uh, Hebrew, in the Hebrew lexicon 8085, uh, the word obedient means Shema. And so, in their language, it's Shema, not obedient. And I look it up, and the meaning is listen. Every time my little Lord said, I'm just, he says, this is what Shema means. Listen, hear, heed, and do. Listen, hear, heed, and do. And anytime I see when I'm rolling through these and the Lord is teaching me and, and I see or hear the word listen, he always reminds me, I've, I've said it a hundred times, that the word listen and silent are spelled with the same letters. They're just rearranged. So anytime he tells me to listen, he's really telling me to shoosh. This thing is driving me nuts. I'm just having issues today, all over the place. But uh, that's okay. God is good. <laughs> ah. It's because my brother didn't hook me up. Usually Nathan sets me up, and 
makes me all pretty and stuff, and not today. He said, you're on your own, dude. Um, so listen, hear, heed, and do. You know, bring that back over here to 19. If you be willing and obedient, you shall eat the good of the land. If I'm willing and if I'm obedient, if I will listen, if I will hear what he's saying, if I will heed to his advice, and if I will do what he says, then I will eat of the good. And if I don't do those things, I won't eat of the good. Pretty simple, right? So uh, when I was arguing with the Lord, he took a minute out of our amazing discussion to let me know that he is the Lord and I am the Son. <laughs> and uh, I don't know if any of y'all got sons, but sometimes when the son tries to tell the dads what's to do, it gets a little funny. Maybe that's just me and my son. <laughs> um, so again, I want to I want to read that one more time as Isaiah 1, 18 through twenty. It says, "Come now, let us reason together," saith the Lord. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they be red like crisp, cr crimson, they shall be as wool. If you are willing and obedient, you shall eat the good of the land. But if you refuse and rebel, you shall be devoured with the sword, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. And that kind of got me on track. That kind of brought me back to, uh, okay, Lord, I guess we won't do the backup plan. <laughs> we'll do the first plan. The first plan is always the best plan, right? So out of all that, what I got was the same theme. I'm, I'm doing some other classes uh, uh, with some with some people from IHOP, and there's an over. I'm doing a, a, a book. Uh, it's a 13 week uh, series, very intense, very invasive, very inconvenient. I was very excited. And I'm telling you this because I think eventually I'm going to try. I'm going to visit with the elders, and if we can come to an agreement, I'm going to offer this um, to to our congregation as a whole. And 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 what it'll look like? It'll it'll look like it's a 13 week class. It sounds, I know that's extensive, and it's, it's five days a week of personal private study, about 45 minutes a day, five days a week, and then one day a week, we all meet for about two and a half hours and talk about what the Lord showed you, what the Lord shared with you, and how you've experienced God this week. And we get to encourage each other, and we get to cry, and we get to laugh, and we get to be angry, and you talk about strengthening relationship with one another through experiencing the presence of God. It is astonishingly amazing. Because that's really how we come to know God is by experiencing Him in our day-to-day -day life, in our day-to-day -day walk. Um, but we're still working all that out. He, 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 but at the end of each, so they call them units. You got day one, day two, day three, day four, day five. And day six is a unit review and I've been able to go through my book and, and look at all my stuff. And I'm telling you, for me personally, my overarching thing, my review almost every single week is either trust or obey. And so the Lord is speaking to me crystal clear about trusting him and obeying him. And uh, it's easy to say, but it's hard for me to do. I've, mm, I've trusted a handful of people and I've been broken and I've been let down. And so if it comes right down to the nitty-gritty, I don't trust a lot of people because I don't know what they're going to do. I know what I'm going to do. Do I trust me? But if I'm going to put my life in your hands, do I trust you enough to take care of it? You get what I'm saying? It's really tricky. And when you've had those kind of experiences with humanity, you have a really tough time trusting God. When, because because it, if I, I, can trust, I can trust my brother Nathan, and if he breaks my trust, he's right here in front of me. Now how am I going to trust a God that I can't see? You get what I'm saying? It like ups the ante. It makes it so much more harder. You know what I mean? And, and then let alone when he says obey, it's easy for me to be, obey when it makes sense. But when he asks me to obey and it don't make no sense, I struggle with that sometimes. And so like he wants us to be fully and totally 100% surrendered to trusting him. And that's tricky for me. I don't know about for you guys. I can't tell you how many times I thought I was trusting him and I ended up in a mess. Which, which that sounds horrible, but that actually causes you to trust him more. <laughs> it's a conundrum, it really is. So anyway, if you guys can take your Bibles now to Matthew chapter 7, I'm actually going to read it. I just gave you, uh, you know, it's super awesome. 
Um, where's my friend? My friend isn't here today, but that's okay. It's so important to get the Word of God inside of us. It reminds me in, in the beginning of Ezekiel, in the beginning of Ezekiel, in, 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 a, in an angel, the Lord shows up and visits with Ezekiel, and he says, eat, these, eat this scroll, it's going to taste like honey. <laughs> I couldn't imagine. Yeah, my wife had a dream one time that she was eating scrolls, and she was just saying, I understand, I understand, I understand, I understand. You know, those scrolls are the Word of God. And, and it's when we read these, when we read this, when we read this Bible and it gets inside of us, we begin to understand his character and who he is and his wants and his desires and his likes and his dislikes and his, we are allowed to do that, we're not allowed to do this type thing. But it's only in constantly feasting on this that you can be just going about your day and then he drops a scripture on you. Like, I mean, I had to go look it up. <laughs> He told me, you know, he told me Matthew, I didn't know that it was Matthew 7, verses 21 through 23, but I knew that was the word of the Lord. You know what I'm saying? Depart from me, I never knew you. I'm like, okay, well, I got to go figure out what that is. And anywho, please, I encourage you guys, read your Bibles. Read your Bibles. They are your friend. It might seem unimportant and irrelevant, but I'm telling you, it makes all the difference in the world for your walk with, with the Lord. So is everybody at Matthew chapter 7, verses uh, 21 through 23? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to read this to you. It says, <clears throat> Not everyone that saith, here, sorry, it's King James. <laughs> Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? And in thy name... Have we not cast out devils? And in thy name, we've done many wonderful works. And then will I profess, this is Jesus, then I will profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you that work iniquity. Now, over the course of the last week and a half, I've went over this passage a hundred times. I've looked it up in a hundred different versions. Maybe not a hundred, I'm exaggerating there. But probably ten or fifteen, no joke. I've looked it up in many different versions. Um, and, and they say some pretty, pretty wild stuff. But here's, here's some stuff that I jotted down for myself because I, I put myself in all these stories. I don't know about you guys, but I think that that helps tremendously. It's easy to put ourselves in the victor's story. Well, just recently the Lord had me come through a story, you know, in the Old Testament where uh, Korok actually assembled 250 men to go against Moses and Aaron, and the Lord showed me that's where I was. And I'm like, whoa. <laughs> that wasn't no fun um, because actually the earth opened up and swallowed Korak and the 250 that was opposing Moses and Aaron. So it's good to put yourselves in the characterizations of the people in the Bible, whether it's David or whether it's Moses and Aaron or, you know, probably not Jesus. I try not to put myself in Jesus' spot ever. I mean, he's a little different. <laughs> but I've put myself in Paul scenarios and Peter scenarios, you know what I'm saying, in James scenarios, and it just makes things so much more real. And personal, you understand. Um, so, in, in verse twenty-two, um, I've—I don't know about y'all, but I've cast out devils in Jesus' name. You know, I've had devils cast out of me. Um, it's an experience. <laughs> it's an experience. Um, you know, I don't recommend you do go through it, but I do recommend that you do go through it. <laughs> I've cast the devils out of people in Jesus' name. You know, I have prophesied in Jesus' name. What just happened, you know what I'm saying, was, was a form of prophecy. Do you understand? They're, as my awesome sister points, gets me, a lot of them are like words of knowledge, you know, or, or a movie played out, but I don't really understand what they mean, so I just kind of try to share to the best of my ability and then just pray for it. Um, but I, I do that um, in... in Actually, Paul says that he wished everybody would do that because building up and edifying one another, is that not cool? I mean, who wants to not? I want, to, I want somebody to tell me cool stuff. <laughs> Anywho, in, in a parallel with this, uh, with this Matthew uh, chapter 7, verses 21 through 23, the parallel to that is Luke 13, 25 through 27. So anytime something is spoken of two times in the Bible, it is very important 
Because even in, in the Old Testament, that's how they confirm that it's the word of the Lord is a double. Is a double. So when something is repeated, it's, it's the Lord confirming it or confirming himself. And so uh, when, I, when I bounced over there to even that, to that, I will real quick. There's a, John, okay. Um, Luke 13, verses 25 through 27, it says, uh, <clears throat> When once the master of the house is risen up and hath shut to the door, and ye begin to stand without and to knock at the door, saying, Lord, Lord, open unto us, and he shall answer and say to you, I know not whence you are. Man, this King James is difficult for me. <laughs> uh, then shall you begin to say, We have eaten and drunken in thy presence, and thus we have taught in the streets. But he shall say, I tell you, I know you not whence you are. Depart from me, all you workers of iniquity. I wish I had a different version so I could read it better. <laughs> or, or you or you are the man. Is it the highlighted part? <laughs> Probably not. Okay. Um, 1325. Awesome. Is this King James too? <laughs> uh, sorry, guys. It says, uh, When once the master of the house has risen and shut the door... Again, that's why I was saying in the beginning that I, I th I'm pretty sure that this is like it, it, the end of times and the Bema Seat type thing. It's, it's the judgment time, you know, for we'll be blessed or, you know, we'll re be rewarded for the good things we've done or, or not done and, and that type thing. So it says, uh, when, you, when once the master of the house has risen and shut the door and you begin to stand outside and to knock at the door saying, Lord, open up to us, then he will answer, I do not know where you came from or I do not know where you come from. Then you will begin to say, we ate and drank in your presence and we taught. We taught in our streets, but he will say, I tell you, I do not know where you came from. Depart from me, all you workers of evil. So this is, uh, this is, this is the same thing, just on a different, just on a different book. And the, so my other thing is, I've taught in the name of Jesus. I mean, have you? you know, have you guys individually had a conversation with a friend and begin to share about Jesus? and try to teach them or explain to them what the Lord has done for you. It may be through your testimony or trying to encourage them that, hey, Jesus is the way, yo. <laughs> I know you're struggling, but if you trust in him, if you just, you know, walk with him, it's going to all pan out. I think that a majority, I might be wrong, but I think that a majority of us have taught in the name of Jesus. And then the last one, I've eaten and drank. I've eaten and drunk. I've eaten and drank. I don't know what that word is. I've eaten and had drink in the presence of the Lord. <laughs> and I think most of us have. I think I, I can't, I don't, you know, there might be one, two, three of us maybe that haven't done Bibles and brunch over here. We've all broken bread together. You know, we've all have families together where grandma and grandpa pray or, or you know what I'm saying, a Thanksgiving and we get together and, and we're thankful and we thank the Lord and, and we invite him and, it, you know, he's there with us and, and then we eat some food. I think we all have done that. And so these are all good things. Are they not good things? Are them good things? Who would say that's a bad thing? Casting out a devil, uh, prophesying, um, teaching in the name of the Lord, or eating and drinking in the presence. Those are all good things, right? So it blows me away. Yet the lover of my soul could say, I never knew you. Depart from me, you worker of iniquity. How does that even work? How does that even work? Oh. So, now we're going to go back to the story that I started in the beginning about how I was walking by the table and the Lord said, open that Bible. And I'm like, okay. Set my coffee down, click the Bible open. And, uh, and, uh, and he highlighted that whole, uh, that word iniquity. I think I took my marker out. That was horrible. <laughs> That's okay. I know where it's at. Um, so so he, he had me read verse 23. In uh, Matthew, Matthew chapter 7, verse 23, and he said, And then I will profess unto them, I never knew you. Highlighted, real big, bold, was the, was the word knew. And he said, Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. And as soon as I read it, he, uh, iniquity kind of popped out to me. And I'm like, how many of you know what iniquity is? Does everybody know what iniquity is? I feel like I should know what iniquity is. I thought I knew what iniquity was. So uh, anyway, it's uh, 
It's a Greek word, number 458, and that number 458 in the concordance or in the lexicon, it's the word anomia. Anomia. I couldn't imagine talking their language. <laughs> anomia. And the word anomia, it means transgression of the law. It means lawless. It means not having the law, not knowing the law, and not even acknowledging the law. And so I find myself in a conundrum. You know what I'm saying? Because I thought that that stuff was done away with. And I'm like, hold on. So Jesus, Jesus, I just did some cool stuff, and you say, depart from me, you worker of iniquity. And so I find myself changing, you worker of of lawlessness, you worker of not knowing the law, not even acknowledging the law. And I'm like, huh. And so I begin to, within myself, go through, um, you know, what my, my perception of what the law is, and, and they can actually break it down, you know, from 613 to 10 to 2. You know what I'm saying? There, there's, 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 so I, I start with this first question is, what is the law? Okay? What is the law? And what I have wrote down here, it's the law is 613 commandments, 613 commandments, 613 mitzvot that are found in the first five books of the Bible com comprised of 248 positive commands and 365 negative commands. Those are the 613 mitzvot, okay? These can then be broken down actually into three sets. And this, this is wild. <laughs> um... The first word, the first sect is called the mishpatim. Mishpatim are the judgments. There's a, there's a Hebrew word for that. Um, the Hebrew word is actually mishpatim. Um, these are the judgments of the Father. If you wanted to look them up, you could find them up in the, in the Hebrew um, concordance. It's the Hebrew number 4914, and then also 4931. Um, the mishpatims are detailed provisions of civil and criminal law. Okay? These don't require faith. These don't require faith at all. These are, these are laws of relationship. Okay? Do not murder. Do not steal. Honor our father and our mother. You know what I'm saying? Um, the laws of relationship. Don't commit adultery. You know what I mean? Those are pretty simple and straightforward, right? So those don't require, require much faith. The second sect is uh, the edot, or what this is, is a testimony or a witness. See, these are symbolically foreshadowing the future. These are, you know, what I've been stuck in, what the Lord's been showing and revealing to me over the course of the last year and a half is the age to come, the messianic age. And so these are detailed, or hold on, these are symbolically foreshadowing laws. These laws foreshadow the age to come. These laws reveal His faithfulness, and these laws reveal our faithfulness. It's a, it's a, it goes both ways, a unilateral. It reveals His faithfulness, it reveals our faithfulness. So these are laws such as keeping the holy days in Leviticus 23. These are keeping the Ten Commandments in Exodus 20. These are wearing the tzitzits that are found in Numbers 15. These are love your God and love your neighbor as yourself, found in Matthew 22. These laws reveal His faithfulness in the age to come, and they reveal our faithfulness if we're going to be faithful to Him. Are you tracking with me? The last one is a hukim. The hukim. Oh, I mean, we can go back. we'll go back to Edot if you want to check that out. That's a Hebrew uh, H5713 if you want to look it up in the original text. Um, the last one is Hukim, which are, which are his statutes and his ordinances. And again, if you want to check it out, it's in the Hebrew in uh, 2708. These are not obvious or rational laws. These are things that I really struggle with. Um, these laws make very little sense to humans. Um, these, for instance, is speaking to a rock for water to come out of it. You know what I mean? And the Lord told Mo Moses to, to speak to the rock and then water would come out. And uh, he got frustrated and he hit the rock twice. It's actually what caused him to not enter into the promised land. <laughs> because uh, the Lord told him to do something and he did his version of it. Kind of what, I'm, you know, I had my version laid out and the Lord was like, we're not doing that. And I'm like, but it's going to be great. <laughs> Uh, you know, another one is, 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 is taking the giants of the land that he's given. You know what I'm saying? He was taking, taking the Israelites to the promised land, and he sent out 12 spies, and, you know, 10 came back with a bad report, and 2 came back with a good report. 
You know what I'm saying? And what's crazy is only the two were the only two that actually made it into the promised land. You know? He told them to do something, and based off of what they see, and I do this all the time, I'm so guilty of this. The Lord tells me to do something, I do a quick evaluation of the circumstances, and I'm like, yeah, that's not for me. But, <laughs> but am I going to trust him? You know what I'm saying? Do I trust that he goes before me and he goes behind me, that he's at my left and my right? Do I trust that he's in you, that he's in you? Because I, I don't know, I'm going to put nobody on the spot or nothing, but is, it, is, is God not, is the Holy Spirit not in anybody in here? Can I get a hand if God's not in them? Please? If we do, that's a trick altar call. <laughs> oh, man. Um. You know, so, so it's, it's, it's taking the giants of the land that he's given us. It's, it's these things just don't really make sense. Um, another one that I jotted down was a kosher diet. That just doesn't make sense to me. It just, it just don't. <laughs> I don't understand it. Ashes of the red heifer. I don't understand that. I don't understand how something that is supposed to uh, cleanse a uh, priest makes them dirty. Any of them that touch it, it makes them dirty. And they got to go through a purification process for seven days. I'm like, what? How, that's supposed to make them clean. How did it make them dirty? <sighs> um, <laughs> all of these commandments and statues and laws are usually referred to the Mosaic Law because Moses wrote them down. However, Romans four three says Romans four three. You don't have to turn there. I'll just read it to you. Romans four three. It says, Abraham believed God, and it was accounted to him for righteousness. What's crazy was Abraham believed God before the law was wrote down. So how does that work exactly? Okay? And, and this, this one right here is where the Lord has rocked my socks off when I'm in this, in this, uh, this thing. <laughs> Sorry, guys. about the, um, the, Lord, the Lord, so he gave me the whole Romans 4, 3. Abraham believed God and it was accounted to him for righteousness. And then it had me roll over to Genesis 5.26. Genesis 5.26, it says, And Abraham obeyed my voice and kept my charge, my commandments, my statutes, and my laws. How did he keep all that stuff if it hadn't been wrote down yet? Um, now, this is, the, this is what's really cool, what I think is really... This is, maybe, I know it don't just happen to me, but when you're actually trying to learn something and studying something out and trying to figure it all out. The Lord takes you and he ties all these things together. So these, these words have numbers next to them. Um, Genesis 26, 5, Because that Abraham obeyed my voice and kept, I'm going to turn this back over, kept my charge. That word charge is the Mishpatim right here. Number 4931. He kept his charge, he kept his commandments, he kept his statutes. The statutes is the Hukim, the third sect, which is 2708, and he kept his laws. He kept all of this stuff before it was ever given. So the point that I'm trying to make is that the spirit of Elohim was on the earth pre-Moses, during Moses, and post-Moses. Is everybody tracking with me? Um, so why all this talk of the law? You know, why am, why am I giving this breakdown of what law is, okay? Because the commandments of God are His ways. It doesn't matter if I agree with them. It doesn't matter if I do them. They're His ways. The world that I live in today says I can disagree with something, cut you out of my life, and run away. I can make my own rules. The world today says if I don't like my wife because she made me mad, divorce her and go get another one. The world today says if I don't like the way that the Lord genetically created me, I can go somewhere else and do that. And we can do that, but those ain't His ways. It's that, it's, it, it's that simple. So, so why is, okay, so what does that mean? These are his ways. Um, well, why is that important? 
Because in Matthew 7, 21 through 23, Jesus said, depart from me, I never knew you. Right? I never knew you. You workers of lawlessness. And then in Exodus 33, I'm going to turn over there and just read this. Exodus 33, verse 13. I'm going to kick back up to 12 just to bring a little bit of context in. So, so God told Moses, you know, hey, you found favor in my sight. And Moses, this is really, Moses was a smart cat. I'm telling y'all, he was a smart cat. He takes what the Lord says and puts it back in the Lord's lap. You know what I mean? So it says, and Moses said unto the Lord, see, you said to me, bring up this people and thou hast not let me know whom you will send with me. And you have said that I know you by, the, by your name and that I found grace in your sight. Some versions will say I found favor in your sight. Okay, 13. Now therefore I pray thee that if I have found grace in your sight, show me now your way that I may know you and that I may find grace more. Are you seeing this? Are you tracking with me? Moses says, show me your ways that I may know you. We know God by knowing His ways. It doesn't matter if you do them. It doesn't matter if you don't do them. It doesn't matter if you agree with them. It doesn't matter if you don't agree with them. These are His ways. And I like to think of it as marriage. In the beginning, let me tell you, when, when I got saved, it was because I wanted to go to heaven. I didn't, give a, I, didn't give a, I didn't give a rip if I had a relationship with God. I just wanted to go to heaven. And when I got married to Susie, I put off this thing that I was something that I wasn't. And over time, the Lord showed me my flaws with Susie and Susie with me. <laughs> and it's the same thing with the Lord. You know, we, 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 we encounter Jesus. We encounter Jesus. But Jesus says, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. Nobody comes to the Father except for through the Son. Okay? Jesus was the counter. Jesus is the entryway. You know, I go, into the, I go into the holy of holies through the blood of Jesus. You know what I'm saying? Are you tracking with me? But the Lord has some deeper things in some of these things that I don't fully understand or that I don't fully agree with. And, uh, you know, He's really been dealing with me on Leviticus chapter, uh, chapter 9, verse 6. Leviticus chapter 9, verse 6. I don't go over here. I'll read that to you. It's a real quick little thing. It's like it's an example for me. Leviticus 9, verse 6, it says, And Moses said, This is the thing which the Lord commanded that you should do, and then the glory of the Lord should appear to you. See, I, I want the Lord to show me His glory before I move. You get what I'm saying? I want to see the cloud. I want to see the pillar of cloud by day and the fire at night before I'm like, okay, I can follow that. And the Lord says, do what I said, and then you'll see my glory. Now, we can do that on the written word or the written law, or we can do that to the spirit of the law, because I can't tell you how many times I've heard the Holy Spirit tell me to do something, and I'm like, well, I'm going to need some proof of that. <laughs> and I don't do it, okay? Okay. Kind of like Abraham. Abraham didn't have nothing written, written down. Moses hadn't come yet. But he had this relationship with God. You know what I'm saying? So, uh, I can't tell you, I cannot tell you guys that you should or should not do the commands of God. I can't tell you that. That's between you and Him. Okay? But I can tell you that to know His ways is to know Him. Whether you do them or don't do them. So when I, when I over here in this, over here in this, uh, the very beginning, the, uh, what was it, the Greek word 458, anomia. I can't find it now. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm just going off memory. The Greek word anomia in that 458, it was 
one of the definitions is not having even the knowledge of the law. What I'm saying is a lot of times we take what Christ said, you know, these two sum up the entire law. These two, love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, soul, and love your neighbor as yourself. They're equally important. If you do these, you have fulfilled all of, all of the law and the prophets. Isn't that what he said? That's cool. But I still want to know what all of them were. I still want to know what all of them were because the Lord is in that. Those are his ways. You get what I'm saying? So the Lord was just taking me through this little thing and just showing me that uh, I've done a lot of cool stuff. I can't put any of this on you guys. I've got to pray with people. I've got to baptize people. I've got to raise the dead. Or no, I haven't. We're prophesying. <laughs> Thanks, Nathan. Um, you know, I've, I've, I've eaten in his presence. I've drank in his presence. You know, I've, I've taught in his name. I've done a lot of cool stuff. And I, for me, you know, when I read that, I, 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 I totally believe that in my salvation. I totally believe that Christ died for my sins. You know what I'm saying? I, I'm, I'm not fearful of any of that. It just causes me to question things. You know what I'm saying? As anything should, I think that any one of us that teach, any one of us that read these words, we have to ask him questions. We, we got to get past, um, you know, the Peshat, just the base level of learning and understanding. I think that, you know, most of us in here are saved. We got to get into the deeper things. We got, you know, uh, I don't remember it fully, but the Briggs' awesome daughter, her oldest daughter, you know, gave a prophetic word that, that basically said, when are we going to get off the elementary things? Didn't she? Am I, am I right? The Lord has so much deeper things that He wants to reveal to us. And, and, and they're found in the simple things. You know, in the crushing and the pressing, I'm making new wine, that song that we just sang. Some of the stuff the Lord has, has, has shared with me, it's uncomfortable. In fact, most of it is. That doesn't mean He's not in it. Do you guys remember your salvation? How uncomfortable was that? I like I like beer. I like drugs. I liked doing the things that I wasn't supposed to do. It was fun. And all of those that really loved me was like, dude, you don't want that. And I'm like, yeah, I do. And they're like, no, you don't. And I'm like, yeah, I do. And they're like, no, you don't. And they loved me and they did not give up on me. And eventually I surrendered and received salvation. But you know how uncomfortable that was? Who wants to surrender? Which one of you tough guys in here wants to surrender? I don't. Which one of you tough ladies in here wants to surrender? Susie don't. I promise you that. <laughs> uh, man, so uh, I'm just saying, when the Lord brings us into new wine, there's a reason them lyrics are wrote in the crushing and in the pressing. He's bringing new wine. It's usually uncomfortable in some way, shape, or form. You know what I'm saying? It, when, when we're comfortable, that's when we become lackadaisical. You know what I mean? And it's, I've been there. Who doesn't want to be comfortable? Who doesn't like the 70 degree air conditioner when it's 100 out? You know what I'm saying? But it kind of shuts down my um, productivity <laughs> when I'm comfortable. You know? Figuring out ways to spur each other on, you know, to, do, to the good things. How do we spur each other on without being an annoyance? So I think this is where I got it messed up when it, that 3:33, because I, I was at a prayer meeting and at 3:33, of course I had to, I had to, you know, go to, go to Jeremiah 33:3, just 3:33, you know. Um, it says, "Call to me and I will answer thee and show thee great and mighty things which you do not know." How are we going to learn anything when we know everything? Whew. Call to me and I will answer thee, and I will show you great and mighty things which you do not know. Depart from me, I never knew you. Depart from me, I never knew you. 
Father, show me your ways that I may know you. Call to me. And he will answer and he will show us mighty things. He will show us the things that we do not know. You have not because you ask not. Ask, seek, and knock. Ask him. If he doesn't answer you, seek him. If you don't find him, bang the door down. When somebody knocks at your door, when, when, when Nathan comes to my house and knocks on my door, and I don't answer, does he get in his car and drive away? He bangs the door down. Actually, he just calls me on the phone. But. <laughs> you guys get what I'm saying? God has good things in store for us. And it might be uncomfortable, and we might not understand it, and we might not agree with it, and that's fine. That's fine. But that doesn't mean stop pressing in. You know what I mean? Because I have a disagreement with somebody, that doesn't mean we stop loving each other. I used to think that's what it means. My favorite line was, lose my phone number. I'm done with you. And the Lord's like, that's not how my family works. I'm like, well, that's how my family works. <laughs> I'm saying we have to make allowances for each other's faults. Test the spirits to know whether it's of God. Doesn't he say that? But what happens when we go to testing things and then our brothers and sisters hate on us because they don't understand what we're doing? Because we're trying to figure out what is God. I can tell you when, when the Holy Spirit ascended upon Jesus and landed on him and, and told John the Baptist, this is my son in whom I'm well pleased, the first thing the Holy Spirit did was led Jesus to the wilderness. He led him to an uncomfortable situation. In the wilderness, it's where we really find our Savior. It's in the dry places that we really cry out. Can we pray? We can pray. <laughs> um, Father, I thank you that just like Jesus in the wedding at Canaan, Heavenly Father, that as we near the end of this age, that you've saved the new wine for last. You have saved the best for last. As we are coming near the, aid, the end of this age, Heavenly Father, you have better revelations. You have better insights. You're allowing us to come closer to who you are, closer than we've ever begun. Thank you for drawing us in, Heavenly Father. Lord, with, 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 with man, some of this stuff seems impossible. But with you, Lord, all things are possible. Father, I ask that you would do the impossible and pour out on us this, these fresh revelations, these fresh insights, whatever they may be. Lord, we give you permission. We take you out of the box and say, have your way. Have your way in our lives. Have your way in our relationships. Have our, your way in our business dealings. Lord, we give you permission to wreck us for what wrecks you, Heavenly Father. Lord, above all else, I ask that your will would be done. That your will would be done. Above my will, above any of our wills, what we think is best, you know what is best, and we just come into line and come into agreement with your plans, your purposes. May your will be done in Jesus' name.